In 1996, physicist Steve Lamoureux confirmed something that Dutch scientist Hendrik Casimir had proposed almost half a century earlier, that even in a perfect vacuum, where nothing should exist, there is still a force at work. Casimir's idea was simple enough to sound absurd. Imagine two uncharged metal plates placed incredibly close together inside a sealed vacuum. No air, no light, no gravity worth noticing absolute emptiness. And yet, those plates would slowly drift toward each other. No magnets, no external energy, just motion born from nothing. It sounds impossible, but this is what the experiment revealed. Empty space isn't empty at all. Beneath the calm surface of the vacuum lies a restless ocean of quantum activity virtual particles that flicker in and out of existence, borrowing energy from the void itself before vanishing again. Between the plates, only certain wavelengths of these quantum fluctuations can exist. Outside, infinitely more. The imbalance creates a minute pressure, enough to push the plates together, a silent whisper from the fabric of space itself. This subtle attraction, now known as the Casimir Effect, changed everything we thought we knew about nothing. It proved that even the quietest void hides motion, energy, and life beneath its surface. Maybe there is no such thing as emptiness. Maybe even nothing is something. The Casimir Effect showed us something extraordinary that even when we strip the universe bare, when we peel away the layers of matter, radiation, and light, what remains is not true emptiness. It's a stage that never sleeps. What we call empty space is, in truth, a vast ocean of invisible energy, a restless sea of quantum fields stretching through every corner of existence. Every particle you can see, from the dust on your screen to the stars billions of light years away, is just a brief ripple on that sea. Even when no particles are present, those fields remain. They hum quietly, vibrating with potential, flickering with fluctuations too small to notice. This invisible structure is what physicists call the quantum vacuum a place where something is always happening, even when it looks like nothing at all. Try for a moment to imagine removing everything, every molecule, every atom, every photon of light. What's left should be absolute nothingness, a perfect void. But when scientists try to calculate that emptiness, they find it still teems with activity. Virtual particles emerge from nowhere, collide, and vanish before they can ever be seen. They're not fantasy. Their effects can be measured, influencing the behavior of atoms, shifting the orbits of electrons, and shaping the expansion of the cosmos itself. This is why a true vacuum, a complete absence of everything, is impossible. Because reality doesn't seem to allow stillness. Even in silence, the universe hums. To human eyes, this invisible world feels abstract, almost philosophical. We perceive stillness where there is motion, emptiness where there is depth. Our senses evolved for survival, not for truth. We see the surface, the stable, predictable, classical world, and mistake it for the whole picture. But quantum mechanics paints a far stranger image. Space itself is dynamic, not a passive backdrop, but an active participant in the story of existence. The fabric of the universe trembles with invisible waves, interacting, collapsing, and re-emerging in patterns that define what we experience as reality. When you look around a quiet room, the air between you and the wall seems still. But at the quantum level, it's alive. Particles pop in and out of being by the trillions every second. For every atom in your body, there are countless fluctuations occurring in the space surrounding it. This is why physicists say everything happens, nothing simply is. 
because even being itself appears to be a constant act of renewal, a balance between appearance and disappearance, existence and possibility. It's easy to forget that this isn't just theory. The same vacuum energy responsible for the Casimir effect also drives the most distant galaxies apart. Dark energy, the mysterious force accelerating the expansion of the universe, might be the echo of that same restless vacuum magnified on a cosmic scale. If that's true, then the ultimate fate of the cosmos may depend not on stars or matter, but on the energy hidden inside what we call nothing. Our perception of emptiness, then, may be one of humanity's greatest illusions. For centuries, philosophers and scientists searched for the fundamental building block of reality, the indivisible atom, the smallest particle, the final layer beneath which nothing could exist. But with every discovery, that final layer seems to dissolve. The deeper we look, the more motion we find. The closer we approach nothing, the more it reveals itself as something. It's unsettling, because it suggests that there may be no bottom, no final foundation upon which everything rests. Reality might be an infinite interplay of change, a cosmic symphony where silence itself carries the tune. And so the idea of nothing becomes almost poetic a word that tries to capture a state the universe refuses to allow. Even the vacuum between galaxies, colder than any place we could imagine, is alive with energy. Even the dark gaps between atoms shimmer with unseen fields. So when we speak of nothingness, we're not describing the absence of existence. We're describing the most mysterious form of it, an invisible stage where particles are born and die in an instant, where energy and time blur into uncertainty. The universe, it seems, cannot stop creating, even when it tries to be still. So perhaps, in our search for nothingness, we've already discovered the first proof that nothing doesn't exist. If the vacuum of space is never truly empty, then the next question becomes inevitable. Can we make that hidden energy reveal itself? In 1951, American physicist Julian Schwinger proposed something extraordinary that under the right conditions, the vacuum could be forced to create matter, not metaphorically, but literally, particles of real, measurable mass born out of pure emptiness. Schwinger's idea emerged from the heart of quantum field theory, a framework that describes reality not as particles moving through space, but as fields interacting through energy. In this view, particles are simply ripples, temporary excitations of these invisible fields. So, if one could apply enough energy to the vacuum, it might shake those fields violently enough to make those ripples permanent. Matter itself, pulled from the void. To understand how that's even possible, we need to look at the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, one of quantum mechanics' strangest and most unsettling rules. It tells us that we can never know both a particle's position and momentum with absolute precision. At the tiniest scales, this limitation means the universe allows momentary violations of energy conservation, little bursts of borrowed energy that appear and vanish before they can be noticed. These fleeting sparks of energy give rise to virtual particles, the ghostly twins that constantly emerge from the vacuum and disappear again. Schwinger realized something profound. If you could apply a powerful enough electric field, those ghost particles could be torn apart before they vanished. The field would separate them so violently that they could no longer recombine, freezing them into reality. What was once temporary would become permanent. 
In essence, you'd be turning vacuum energy in the quiet hum of space into actual matter and antimatter pairs. The analogy often used is found in the world of quarks, the building blocks of protons and neutrons. Inside atomic nuclei, when scientists try to pull quarks apart, the energy required grows so immense that, rather than separating them, the universe finds it easier to create a new pair from the vacuum itself. It's as if nature refuses to allow true isolation. Every act of separation becomes an act of creation. But the fields needed to make Schwinger's vision a reality are unimaginably strong. Electric fields so powerful they would dwarf anything humanity could produce. Fields only found near neutron stars or at the event horizons of black holes, where gravity and magnetism stretch space itself to its limits. For decades, Schwinger's prediction remained theoretical, a haunting equation that pointed toward a miracle the universe kept hidden, until recently. In 2022, researchers at Manchester University managed to replicate the essence of this phenomenon in a laboratory not with cosmic electric fields, but with something incredibly small. Graphene Graphene is a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice, thin, flexible, yet so strong and conductive that it behaves almost like a miniature universe for electrons. In this delicate structure, scientists found a way to mimic the extreme conditions of Schwinger's theory. When they applied strong electric fields to the graphene sheet, they noticed something extraordinary. Electrons and their antimatter counterparts, called holes, spontaneously appeared where none had existed before. No particles were introduced, no atoms split, just energy turned into matter. The effect wasn't symbolic, it was measurable. They had, in a sense, watched the vacuum give birth. It was a modern echo of Schwinger's vision, proof that even in the most controlled, human-made environments, nature obeys the same strange laws as the cosmos. Something had emerged from what we thought was nothing. This discovery didn't just validate a 70-year-old prediction, it blurred the line between the possible and the philosophical. If energy fields can pull particles from the void, then the vacuum itself is not passive. It's reactive, creative, a canvas constantly capable of painting new realities when disturbed. And in the depths of the universe, near the violent edges of black holes or within the magnetic storms of neutron stars, the Schwinger effect may not just be a laboratory curiosity. It might be happening all the time particles forming and annihilating, weaving the fabric of space in endless cycles of destruction and creation. It's a revelation that forces us to rethink what nothing really means. If emptiness can produce matter, then creation is not a singular event that happened long ago. It's an ongoing process written into the universe itself. The vacuum is not a void, it's a womb. And so, with nothing but empty space and a strong enough field, we witnessed creation itself. What if everything we see, every atom, every star, every breath, is not built from solid particles, but from invisible fields weaving through the fabric of existence? According to quantum field theory, that's exactly how the universe works. Beneath what we call matter lies a deeper foundation, one where reality is not made of tiny building blocks, but of vibrations. Each particle you've ever heard of, electrons, photons, quarks, isn't a little object floating in space. It's a wave, a disturbance, in a field that fills all of space and time. When we say, an electron exists, what we really mean is that the electron field has rippled. When light appears, it's the electromagnetic field vibrating. Every type of particle has its own field, and the universe is simply the sum of all of them interacting. 
Reality, in essence, is a grand orchestra, a cosmic symphony of fields, each playing its unique note, forming everything we know. Even the so-called emptiness between galaxies, that dark, endless vacuum, hums faintly with the activity of these fields. They never truly rest. They flicker, shift, and exchange energy constantly. Out of this subtle dance emerge virtual particles, temporary pairs that appear and vanish too quickly for us to detect directly, yet leave traces in the universe's behavior. These fleeting ripples are responsible for phenomena that shape the very structure of space itself. In this sense, nothing is not an absence. It's the most active, dynamic thing imaginable. The vacuum is a restless sea. Among these fields, one stands apart. The Higgs field. It's everywhere, invisible and silent, but it gives mass to everything that moves through it. Without it, Particles would rush around at the speed of light, incapable of forming atoms, stars, or life. When the Higgs field was confirmed experimentally in 2012, it wasn't just a scientific victory. It was the discovery that space itself has a texture, a hidden resistance that gives form to the formless, and the Higgs field doesn't act alone. Every other field collaborates with it in perfect coordination electromagnetic, gravitational, strong, and weak forces, all woven together like threads of one vast cosmic web. The stability of the universe depends on this invisible teamwork. Change one note in this grand pattern, and the entire song could collapse. Some physicists believe that everything, the galaxies, time, even consciousness, could be the result of a single, spontaneous fluctuation in this web of fields. A vacuum genesis, the birth of the universe from what seems like nothing at all. The idea sounds impossible, yet the equations say it could happen. In the quantum realm, even the vacuum can briefly break its own rules, borrowing enough energy to spark creation before returning to equilibrium. What if, long ago, one of those fluctuations never faded? What if it grew, expanded, and became our cosmos? Physicist Lawrence Krauss once described this beautifully. The laws of quantum mechanics allow universes to be created from nothing, provided there's nothing to begin with. In other words, existence doesn't require a cause in the traditional sense. Reality, by its very nature, might be self-generating. And David Tong, one of today's leading quantum theorists, paints an equally striking picture. What we perceive as solid matter is just the ocean made visible. We are not floating in a universe of particles. We are waves in the sea of fields. Our bodies, our thoughts, the air we breathe, all temporary ripples on an infinite surface that has no true bottom. It's a perspective that both comforts and unsettles. Comforts because it reveals that everything is connected. Every movement, every vibration, every breath is part of a single living continuum. And unsettles because it erases the illusion of separation. The distinction between something and nothing begins to fade. Maybe the universe was never a grand creation event, but a fluctuation that became aware of itself. Maybe we are that fluctuation, the cosmos observing its own waves. From this view, existence is not built on something. It is something, a self-sustaining pattern that never truly stops. Even in its quietest moments, the vacuum hums softly with possibility, whispering through fields that never cease their motion. And perhaps that's the deepest truth of all, that reality doesn't need an origin story. It simply is, unfolding endlessly, transforming emptiness into form, silence into sound, stillness into awareness. The universe may have never known true emptiness, for even in the silence of the void, reality whispers, and from that whisper, we were born.